You're listening to Community Radio, CKMS, Radio Waterloo, 1-2-1-7, 946 on the Rogers Digital Network. morning waterloo region it's monday december the 16th halfway through december in the studio today we have mike sharp to talk about music and waterloo region the first nation of iron by jp morton polish your medals and the flag to you stand by your nation Kiss their boots, salute the rags to you. Stand by your nation. Potato ship will censor you, so no one can hear you. Democracy will let you down, but no one listens to you. Stand by your nation What's your country, who's your family? What's your affiliation? What's your union, who's your company? Show identification Decide which laws you must abide Feed you propaganda Blind you with patriotic pride Fulfill their agenda Step by your nation Send a war, a victim of conscription. Bribe you with an afterlife, bend you to religion. Remember, you are who the foe. Every poison has its antidote. No such thing as revolution, it's a bad evolution. Stand by your nation Stand by your nation Mission of fight in the world of steel Stand by your nation Time to store the Bastille Stand by your nation Stand by your nation Stand by your nation Thank you. 
vibration And I had a lot of patience Where is my other hand? Can somebody say? Can somebody tell I love her? Still I love her. Can't you hear me pray? Many, many ways I love you. Still I wonder. I wonder why to Patrick Wade from his Inglaterra album that was Where Is My Other Half. Before that, we heard J.P. Mortier and Nation of Iron. J.P. Mortier was in the studio a few weeks back. Uh, we've got some live tracks, including Nation of Iron, that uh, we may end up playing a little bit later on, if time permits. Patrick Wade, who we just heard, wrote to us way back in May of this year and wrote, uh, I wanted to reach out and send over a digital copy of my new LP, Inglaterra with hopes that you might be interested in checking it out. A little about me and the album follow from today's Ear Milk premiere of the record, and he quotes, Dead Horse Beats has delivered a full-length album entitled Inglaterra. The Montreal-based producer and multi-instrumentalist Patrick Wade has put forth a new batch of songs via Bastard Jazz Recordings that feature signature spacey grooves and an increased focus on lyricism. Drawing stylistic inspiration from a legacy of soul music from the 1970s to today, DHB named the album after the Spanish word for England as a nod to the country's culture and cloudy climate, and the music follows suit. In addition to offering a plethora of laid-back fuzzy beats on Inglaterra, DHB covers the majority of the vocals on the album. His vocal delivery is understated but soulful, and with his vulnerable lyrics, it provides a fitting addition to his production aesthetic. I'll have a link to that in the show notes. You can see those at radiowaterloo.ca slash ccc. But in the studio today, we have Mike Sharp. Welcome to the studio, Mike. Welcome. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. Awesome. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. <laughs> really? You didn't bring your guitar today. I didn't bring my yeah, guitar. I'm so disappointed. Yes, yeah. uh, I'm not ready to perform today. No. Um, but no, we have lots of other things to talk about, I'm sure. So. It is the season for um, systemic virus infections and the like, right? And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's got to be good to, in order to put it on the air, right? I think so. I think so. 
that's that's one thing that yeah that I've been focusing on recently is is having quality um, outputs mm-hmm. um, in all aspects of things. Like I want to do things right um, and not half ass, quote yeah. unquote. Absolutely. If, if yeah. it doesn't sound right, then you know you have to live with that, especially. Nowadays on the internet, nothing ever goes away. Right, it's going to stay there. We're recording this. There'll be a podcast, (laughs) and uh, you know, if if things go badly, then you know that's how you're going to be known. Yeah, Mike, archived who performed badly on CK. Yeah, first time on the radio. We'll we'll have you back. No, um, absolutely. When you're um, back on top of the weather again, uh, bring your guitar, come into the studio, and we'll do that uh, live on air in studio performance thing. (laughs) Look forward to that. Yeah. yeah. So I met you. um, What? September-ish, or so September 21st, actually. Yeah, It was exactly. the International Day of Peace, and you were performing at Rhythm and Brews. Rhythm and Brews, yeah. I was yeah. there a few other times after that. Um, they do an open mic on Thursdays, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a band there, and they play um, some some sort of covery stuff, and then some yeah, jammy yeah. blues things, and yeah. I was showing up every once in a while and just kind of hanging out and playing, okay. playing with the guys. They're pretty cool. No, no one guy same like, same group every uh, week. Yeah, they group? have like an in-house band, okay. um, and then sort of odd people will show up here and there. Okay. Um, it seemed like, and this is the same case with with other uh, other open mics as well. It's a, it seems like there's lots of new people, like one or two almost okay. everywhere yeah. every week. Yeah. Um, coming out of somewhere, right? Yeah, exactly. Out of nowhere almost. Exactly. And open uh, mics, jam sessions, uh, you know, open stages for you know, all sorts of performances. Now, we just lost the uh, the Boathouse a little while back. They were having an open house or an open stage, uh, I think, every other week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this summer I was there almost every week um, for for the Battle of the Bands and mm-hmm. just to, you, yeah. know, you know, meet uh, meet people and network and then things like that. Yeah, it's sad that it's that it's gone for now, but I think it'll come back. Maybe it'll. Oh, I think it'll come back. It's yeah. it's one of these Phoenix type of arrangements, you know, <laughs> go out uh, in, in flames and come back from the ashes. I think so. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people will have a, a lot of good memories with that place too. Yeah. And just it's, it's been sort of an important, uh, important stepping yeah. stone for, for new musicians around. It is, it is. CKMS has the privilege of being uh, there on some Tuesdays and doing some live to air. You know, we've set up our remote uh, studio out there and okay. uh, Francis Clare on Three Nines Radio would broadcast the entire proceedings for the evening. It was, cool. Yeah, it really was. Yeah. It really was. And that's what the community radio station is all about. Right? It's, it's I, getting into the community and you know, showcasing community talent. That's good. It's good that this exists. Yeah. <laughs> when you're not at uh, Rhythm and Brews doing open mic, what do you do? Um, most of the time, at least recently, the last few months, I've been, I've been focusing on my music, mm-hmm. um, You're writing, writing things, uh, refining a okay. lot of refining, yeah, yeah. uh, and then sort of focusing on, you know, practicing technical type things. Uh, okay. Um, I've been teaching myself other instruments, um, in the hopes that, that all gain like a deeper understanding of music as a whole. Um, yeah. I played guitar for like 14 years or so. Yeah. Um, and that was my only instrument for a really long time. And so recently I've been teaching myself how to play the drums and mm-hmm. how to play the saxophone and how to play oh, piano. Saxophone. That's, that's... The saxophone has been great. Yeah. Um, it has a lot of, a lot of potential. Okay. It opens up a lot of doors. I've never managed anything with strings on it, but, you know, stuff that I can blow into, I can I can make sound like music sometimes. That's awesome. You know, it, uh, you know guitars have, have passed me by. I don't know what it is. Right, yeah. right. I tend to, I, I find I have it a, a bit of a talent, I guess, or like a natural ability to yeah. play stringed instruments. Yeah. Um, Some people do. Yeah, and it's weird how that works out. I find, and brass, on the like at the opposite end of the spectrum, brass really? is something that's always been a challenge for me. Okay. I can't just like intuitively pick it up. Yeah, and I'm not sure I can do do brass instruments either. You know, it's, it's reeded instruments, uh, fluty instruments. Okay. But, uh, nev- I've never act- I picked up. Longham McQuaid had um, a display out at Open Streets uh, in Waterloo Square uh, a few years back, where they had a, an arrange arrangement of instruments, and you know you could try out things like a plastic trombone you know? yeah and it, it wasn't just you no know, a, a toy plastic trombone it was a, an instrument quality trombone so i tried blowing into that sounded like um an elephant with disease um 
But you know, I got sound out of it. So yeah, uh, I, I did realize from that though, trombone is not my instrument. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, trombones are particularly strange. I got one from from Keenan actually. Oh. <laughs> Keenan Reamer Watts gave me a an old broken trombone, but before it was broken, um, we were jamming out on them. Okay. <laughs> he has he has two of them, and so we were kind of messing around and just making some noises. But it it actually broke in the process, so. Um, yeah, there's something about brass instruments that are particularly strange. Uh, but I also have a flute and I was, oh, I, okay. <laughs> I tried to pick it up the other day. Um, I was putting some time into it last year, mm -hmm. um, learning a little bit of like how to, how to function it. Um, and it's weird because in that time I've learned how to play the saxophone and I've gotten okay at it. Yeah. I wouldn't say I'm like super proficient at it or anything, but, um, I do perform, um, on it live but uh having going that to back to the flute it's it's really strange because i would have i would have thought that um developing the diaphragm muscles and like breathing technique mm -hmm. would have would have translated in some way but like i almost passed out trying to play the flute it's like oh, i'm trying really? to blow bl blow in <laughs> such a weird way i'm actually getting super like edited oh, like okay. okay you know what yeah, yeah. i'm gonna put this instrument down for now so maybe it's not for me yeah well but. it's a uh, different embouchure too right you have to hold your mouth completely differently for a flute for a saxophone for a trombone those are entirely mm -hmm. different instruments as as regards your mouth position yeah yeah how they're played yeah. and it's it's entirely yeah it's a totally different world of yeah. of expression too you picking this up on your own or do you have some formal training in, in these instruments i wish i had formal training and i, I was i've been thinking about it because i think it could fast track me a little bit um but no i've just been just been attacking them on my own um i'm sort of i'm sort of reluctant to to want to be taught yeah um I like to discover yeah. things by myself. If you've got the talent for it, then you know perhaps the didactic instruction isn't necessary. Right, and I think I think that's oh well. I shouldn't say that I don't have any formal instruction. I took um, music in school, like I was in concert band. Okay, okay. Um, I played tenor sax for for uh, two semesters, I believe. All yeah, right, but um, there weren't any tenor sax parts in the yeah. concert band that I was in. Ah. So I was playing like bass parts or like tuba parts on the, on the tenor, which is. All right. That's odd. That's odd. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of it was in the bass club. Yeah. You uh, um, start off on clarinet? No, no. Okay. Cause I know a lot of sax players begin with the clarinet. And yeah. then you know, after a, a few months of training on the clarinet, they'll switch to the instrument that they want to play, which is a sax. Yeah. I actually wanted the baritone sax in high school. They yeah. had, uh, there was one, baritone sax but it was in disrepair oh. <laughs> so, which most of the instruments were like i oh, grew up in a in a really small town okay. there wasn't a lot to work with oh, that's too bad um, okay, instruments uh, they had a few not all schools have instruments anymore in, in the time uh, that my son was uh, in school going from kindergarten through to grade four or so grade, grade seven no great grade four um Music departments got decimated. There used to be a wow. full, mu full music room with instruments and a dedicated music teacher. And then the teacher retired and was not replaced. Mm -hmm. And then the classroom was put to different use to, to let the end. There was a teacher who was teaching music part-time with um, a little cart full of recorders just going from classroom to classroom. Whoa. You know, so... Music education isn't being well funded in the schools today. That's wild. Yeah. Um, that's that's so sad. If, if I had to pick the biggest mistake that I've made in my academic life, it's that I did not take a music course in school. Right. Yeah. Um, I found in in retrospect, I, I didn't take it as seriously as I maybe should have. Um, I was a, definitely a different person back yeah. when I was still taking school, and so. Did you have the intention of going out and being a professional musician? Part of me did. Um, I mean, aside from from every boy's dream of uh, you know being a rock right. on uh, you know big uh, stage concert <laughs> uh, at at ten thousand uh, seat arenas, you know, mm. aside from that, aside from the that, fantasy, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like I just didn't, and I still don't really have a clear image of what that is. Um, there's certain things that I want out of being a musician. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's certain expectations that, that society might hold on me for being a musician. 
and is trying trying to find the middle ground or the balance between those two things for me, mm-hmm. um, so that I can live comfortably and be happy with what I'm doing. You know, yeah. um, I wouldn't want to be that. And I feel like it could have happened where let's say, um, let's say th- the th- things worked out the way that I would have wanted them to, which is continue to play the saxophone through high school, let's yeah. say, which in grade 10, I think that's where I was at. Um, and they actually closed the, the music program in my high school because nobody signed up for it. And it's just kind of an interesting um, difference from mm-hmm. not having the program um, and people wanting it versus having it. And then only two people in the whole school sh- sign up for it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, th- I feel like if, if things would have progressed that way, then I would almost be obligated to continue doing something that maybe wasn't uh, exactly yeah. what I needed. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> you mentioned um, Keenan Amarat a little bit ago. Um, let's listen to something that uh, he's done. He's part of the group Erso, he and um, Veda Hingert McDonald. So uh, let's listen to Old Stones by Erso, Keenan Reimer Watts, and Veda Hingert McDonald. Cool, sounds okay? good. Yeah. How easy it is to toil to no end. A tired and weathered Waving to the wind and the earth Call still like a clear And we're near to ourselves as we stand Old stones to turn There so, that's Keenan Reimer Watts and Veda Hingard McDonald playing Old Stones from a recent album, their EP called Air So. I've got Mike Sharp in the studio. Mike, you know Keenan. I do know Keenan. Yeah. Uh, Keenan and Veda 
are now friends of mine, yeah. um, whether they like it or not. I know they're <laughs> listening right now. So, um, yeah, I met Keenan uh, at um, St. Jacob's Market, actually. I was I went out to jam with a friend of mine um, who plays bongos. Yeah. And Keenan was there playing um, marimba, okay. I think it is. It's like a wooden, it's like a tongue drum type thing. Oh, okay. Um, like a wooden instrument. So you had one of those, uh, the box you sit on. Yeah, yeah the yeah. box. Yes. Um, no, you don't sit on it. You it's it's on? just oh, like okay. a, it's like a shoebox size thing. Oh, it has okay. cutouts at the top and you hammer on it. Ah. And each tongue oh, has a different okay. tone. I've seen that very same instrument because yeah. we brought it out to uh, some event in Waterloo Square. That point. thing, yes. yeah. I, I can't remember I what it's called. on it. Yeah, right. Um, and so we jammed there. I, I brought my didgeridoo, my saxophone. Oh, my didgeridoo. And okay, okay. So, and so, so, <laughs> inventory of Mike Sharp's musical collection. Um, right. You have a didgeridoo. A didgeridoo. Of two didgeridoos. Two didgeridoos. Didgeridoo. <laughs> die. <I don't>. <laughs> didgeridoo. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. Do um, didgeridoo. So two of those: saxophone, mm -hmm. trombone, in. <laughs> A state of a disrepair. State of disrepair. <laughs> flute. Yep. And guitars. Guitars. Guitars plural. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Multiple guitars. Acoustic. Ukulele. I have. A, I have a an acoustic. I have a two acoustic. Two acoustics, and then the rest are electrics. Mm -hmm. I had a classical, but it broke. And classical is is different from uh, like a nylon string acoustic. Okay. Yeah. Nylon cat cut, perhaps. Maybe uh -huh. back in the day. Like maybe like a gypsy style guitar okay. or okay. Spanish guitar. Some Spanish people would think guitar. of it All as. Right. Um, but yeah, so I met him at uh, at St. Jacobs. We were busking. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, and it was a really good time. And then we started to um, get in contact after that, and um, just found out that we have common interests. Mm -hmm. um, one being community orientation, like creating community and being a part of community. Um, and our ideas with uh, with ecology and you know trying yeah. to help um, the state of the yeah. state of the earth, I yeah. guess, yeah. In, in in ways that we can. He he was running a, a community garden um, oh, building that as well type thing. I don't remember exactly what he was calling okay. it, but basically people would sign up to have gardens built on their lawn, and uh, groups of people would show up and basically just build. A garden um, okay. with wildflowers and whatnot in in it for right. for the bees to to be able to uh, collect right. their pollen and right, stuff like right. that. Uh -huh. So we started doing that together. Um, I did I think I did it a couple times, and I don't remember how many how many gardens they put up um, in the summertime. But it was yeah. it was really cool. Um, just yeah. it seemed like a really nice group of people that was interested in yeah. stuff like that. Um, and then recently he played at my house. Uh, ah, so I ran a, a, a house concert, a show, yeah, for for Halloween. That seems to be a popular thing nowadays, house concerts. Cause... Yeah, it comes up and down. Um, when I first moved here, there was a few. Mm -hmm. um, there was, I think, four that I knew about, um, and they sort of they, some die off, um, okay. just because of the emergent state of that of that sort of thing. Saturated the community of people who are willing to host, maybe. Yeah, um, and it's not always easy for people to find places to, to host easily. And sometimes the landlords aren't happy with it either. Ah, and that gets yes. in the way. Um, the one people, yeah. the one uh, group that, that comes to mind right off the bat, um, they actually got evicted from their, from mm -hmm. their house because the owner sold it. Um, so they could build condos or whatever. Well, that's happening um, so much in, in downtown kitchen or at the yeah, moment. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's weird. People and I'm in, I'm actually in a spot where I, I think that's, that's probably going to be happening too. Um, but yeah, they, they come up and down and, uh, but I, I think there's, there's always a, there's always a want for that. Mm -hmm. it, it's sort of, it has a community aspect to it where people can, can be um, close and comfortable with people that they might not necessarily um, normally have that right. with. And yeah. it, it's in a house. And so you feel like you're kind of at home. Yeah. Um, and then there's live music if, too. Yeah. So it's a different environment for, for, you're not, you're not having to broadcast yourself out to an audience that may or may not be paying attention. So mm. at Rhythm and Bruise, for example, um, you know, we were sitting way at the back from where you were, you know, it's a, it's a long building, uh, quite cavern. Oh, it's a brewery, right? So it's got all the, uh, the, the brew tanks 
around the uh, edge. It's, it's a wonderful space for performing. Yep. But we were far away and yep. not paying 100% attention, I have to admit. So what, what's well, that yeah. like when you're a performer and, and the audience isn't there with you? It's, uh, it's a totally different vibe um, when, when the audience is engaged and, and close to you. Mm -hmm. um, and there for the music as opposed there to there for the to music. Yeah. It's a good point. Yeah, there to listen and um, there to, you know, absorb something and reflect something. Uh, it's interesting, too, you know, having a raised stage versus playing on the same level as the audience. Oh. Um, that's one thing that I've noticed at every house show that I've been to is that there, there's the people are performing not on a stage. It's, it's right. on the level of right. the audience with members the audience it's, it's literally one with group the rather than you and the audience it's everybody mm -hmm. okay. and uh yeah the, people still want to separate themselves a bit there's still that barrier um which is good because people need their room but uh yeah i found there's there's been progress with quite a few people that i know um that have opened up to um being close with people dancing things like that mm -hmm. um, where they're not comfortable opening themselves up like that in a public space, but in, in a house right. venue, they're kind of okay. a little more comfortable doing that. Um, it's powerful. It's yeah. a powerful. Experience. And you perform a different repertoire when you're in a situation like that, as opposed to being on a, a formal stage. Um, I don't, I don't know if I do. Uh, I think it comes out differently naturally. Okay. Um, what about the instrumentation? You, you have the same guitar with you for both uh, events. Like uh, when you're in a house setting, you'll bring an acoustic guitar, probably. Well, um, maybe not. Yeah, no. It's uh, dynamics plays plays into that. Um, I find at larger venues, you have to sort of amplify to a certain level, no matter what, mm -hmm. unless they have a really good sound system, um, and then you can be subtle and quieter, and the sound still comes through. Um, but yeah, uh, in in a smaller close knit venue, sometimes an acoustic set makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. But sometimes you can get away with uh, still being a little more diverse dynamically, right. um, as long as as long as you're careful. Right. Um, so the the venue that I run is called Mountain Music House, and oh, we have been oh, running yes. it for four years. Where's that? Um, it's on. Well, right now it's on. Wellington and King, the mm -hmm. corner of Wellington and King is where we, where we live. Okay. Uh, we moved there from it's uptown Waterloo. Yeah. yeah. It's literally really close. I didn't think that this was so close. Oh, yeah. um, I saw them. I was like, Oh my goodness. I, I walk past this place all the time uh -huh. um, without realizing it. So that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, there's sort of a community that, that has come together through that. Um, bands love playing in front of a close audience. Like as a musician, it's like the perfect, um, perfect scenario. You've got, um, you're inside, <laughs> it's cold out, you're inside, yeah, yeah. you're with your audience, they're there for you, um, you're getting paid and the sound is like good. It's monitored, it's like people are paying attention to that. Um, yeah, and it's sort of stress free as well in a way. There's not a whole lot of expectation or obligation to be anything in particular. You just sort of like show up, do your thing. And most of the people there are there for the people that show up. So it's uh and so your venue, which is sorry, is it, tell me the name again. It's called uh Mountain Music House. Mount not mountain. Not mountain. Mount Anne. Mount Anne. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. It's the name of the street that um, that we started it on. Oh. Uh, okay. When we lived up in Waterloo, we lived on Mount Anne Drive. Ah. And we started it there, so we called it the Mount Anne Music House. Okay. Um, and it's it's for performance? Yep. Recording uh, studio? Not quite recording studio okay. yet, but there are plans to, to expand the house in many ways, mm -hmm. one being that. Um, to be able to record high quality stuff for bands um, when they're not playing live. We have we have done some live recording okay. of concerts in the past, mm -hmm. but it's really hard to get a solid, oh. like even balanced sound. Um, Tell me about it. The live performances here in the studio have a very raw and unpolished sound to them yep. uh, because this is not 
um, a recording studio. This is a broadcast studio, right? Okay. So, so we don't have the equipment. The board is different. So. Yeah. And I know that public address system, you know, the, the amplification of sound for an audience is entirely different from recording a sound. Yeah. And when you have ambient mics in the room and it's being um, amplified through the through the yes. PA as yes. well, and you start to get like weird feedback or yeah. extra noise. Oh, and yeah. then the audience is making their noise as well, mm -hmm. which is great for the performance, but not great for the recording. Yeah. So um, we're hoping to expand the house in, in a few ways. Um, which kind of brings me to the next, um, the next topic a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah, sure. Um, there was another house um, that was doing concerts, smaller concerts, albeit they were they were still significant. Um, but they were they tended to be like solo acts or duo acts, acoustic sets, mm -hmm. um, quieter sort of close knit things. Um, it was called Cosmic Maple, and it was by um, the Church of the Good Shepherd down um on margaret's no it's on queen street uh um, queen and margaret, margaret. Yeah. yeah yeah um this particular house was on margaret street um by there and so they would run concerts and they would also run sort of community oriented events mm -hmm. like um, they would have lectures um during the closing ceremony for example they had mike morris come out okay. and we actually had like a like an open, the Green Party candidate. The yeah, the election. Green Party yeah. candidate, yeah. Um, he was there giving a sort of, well, asking questions really was all he was sort of doing, um, asking people what they thought about um, democracy and um, having like an open discussion about how people feel about democracy and their representation mm -hmm. in the political climate, um, things like that, um, that are getting people together, thinking about things that are community-based, um, and we want to sort of, they, they stopped doing that. They had a closing ceremony oh. and Mike was there for that. Um, but they had to move away. Um, and we want to sort of carry on the it torch happen. with that. Yeah. Um, get, it's going to be close geographically to that location. So pretty close. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's a good spot for it. And I think people, people want that. People yeah. want more of a sense of community to feel yeah. like they're a part of something bigger and, I want to sort of help yeah. provide that. Do you have um, a list of upcoming events? Uh, we don't have any upcoming events posted. Mm -hmm. um, we have a few in the works right now, but on the Facebook page, if if people were to go to mountainmusichouse.com or, or not to, .com, facebook.com <laughs> <laughs> slash music, okay. I guess would yeah. be the one. Stick um, it in the uh, show notes, so I'll find it there. Yeah, all the events would be posted there. So okay. we're going to be doing a a larger concert in the new year and we're going to be doing a uh, a sort of festival where um solo acts can can come out and play um slash marketplace and we're oh. sort of kind of juggling ideas with with what that exactly is going to be so marketplace not just for musicians but for artisans and um possibly writers poets having their literature available for sale? That's exactly right, uh, yeah. Um, art and culture and maybe crafts or mm -hmm. food um, potentially as well. Yeah. So, yeah, just trying to get people yeah. together, you know. Yeah. 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 And then a participatory thing, so this will be run as a co-op? Uh, it's sort of like a, like a not-for-profit organization right now. Okay. Um, we... We haven't profited from it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a musician. I... <laughs> yeah. Uh, right now, our platform is like pay what you can, and then okay. all proceeds go to the performers. Okay. Um, but in the meantime, you have upkeep of the property and and advertising yeah. costs. There's and, there's costs involved. Yeah. Um, sometimes we'll provide food, and then there's the electricity and, and yeah. things like that. Um, and so we're we're sort of exploring the other options as well with ways to make it more sustainable for us right um to make it more sustainable for everyone else um because i think it does provide something really valuable that there's a there's a niche for it yeah. um and ha having it sustainable is, is really important you've been talking about this in the plural um who's in with you uh so it started out with two of my friends mm -hmm. um who we ended up 
being a, in a band together. Um, my friend Travis and Jacob. Um, Jacob was a drummer. Travis is a bassist. Mm -hmm. And we were in a band. We, we started that. Um, the band broke up. Oh. One of the guys moved out. And uh, recently, uh, another guy has moved in named Alex, who's expressed a lot of interest in in what the house represents. Mm -hmm. um, and musician as well? He's a musician as well, okay. yeah. He's also a drummer. Um, and so I've been sort of um, shifting responsibilities, like uh, discussions about the, the future of the house sort of ceased once the band broke up oh. and once this new guy comes in, he's sort of like, Oh, Hey, this has a lot of potential still guys, which is great. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so we've, uh, we've been talking quite okay. a bit about, have you performed together yet? Uh, actually we performed for the first time together yesterday. Oh. Um, I recently joined a church a yeah. Zion church okay. um, down King street which is really cool. Uh, it's like a small new church and they wanted some musicians to, to hold down the choir. And All so right. I'm, I'm playing bass in that and okay. he's playing the drums and it's, it's been fun. All it's right. Been, All <laughs> yeah. right. So band potential in this or just, I think so. Yeah. Okay. I think, um, so there's going to be a shuffling around of people who are living in the house and we're going to be getting new people moving in. Most of those people are going to be musicians. Right. And, I don't see how, how we won't possibly be. not play music. Yeah, together. Yeah. We'll yeah. definitely be yeah. playing music together. Yeah. You know, it's, I, I it just happens. Yeah. yeah. So what, what, what sort of music would, I mean, there's something different in, in the church, very likely that you were playing at yeah. the brewery. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. It's really interesting. Um, because I have people ask, ask that all the time, like what kind of music I play when I'm playing it or, um, what I, what kind of music I want to play? It's really hard to come yeah. up with an answer, you know. Like, <laughs> I guess um, if when you heard me at the brewery, I was playing with an acoustic, yes, um, singing mostly covers, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know what kind of style that was. Maybe like was... not country. <laughs> it wasn't country, no, no, no. But there were you played some country tunes. Yeah. You did that. Uh, exactly. It, it was, it was, it was pleasant and, and uh, it, it, it is the international day of peace and the music that you chose that you played fit the occasion. Oh, okay. So, Good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I thought so. Good. Which is why I asked you to come out here. <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. And I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, but no, yeah, for the, uh, for the church, it's, it's sort of funky soul. Really? Um, is what we were playing, okay. but then uh, Alex and I have jammed together a few times, um, and it sort of gets more on the jazzy side of things. Um, right. Yeah, uh, depending on what other restrictions are there or what other sort of restrictions we create for ourselves. Okay. Um, when I'm playing in the church, for example, I I know that there's a certain like expectation and things that yeah. that work and things that people want to hear, um, and I'm playing a bass. So right. I only have so much freedom right. to do right. specific things. Yeah. Bass um, is, is a more versatile instrument than I ever thought. Yeah. So, oh, I've, yeah, I'm learning that yeah. um, more. The more I play it, uh, the role that it, the role that it plays, the role that, that the instruments play. I think that's, that's what I'm learning um, by, by teaching myself new other instruments is, is how I prefer to have those instruments played okay. in my music. So and so when you come back, I do expect to have you back, you know, bring the house members along and, you know, do the jam here in the studio. Cool. Then, yeah. Yeah. yeah this, That'd be a really good yeah, idea. We can talk more about uh, what Mount Anne music is, is all about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, excellent. Is there a recording session in your near future? Since you're living in a recording studio, essentially. Mm -hmm. Sorry, is that, is that your residence as well? Or? That is my residence. Okay. Um, yeah. And it is, it tends to be where I do my recording. Okay. Um, and so there will definitely be some recordings coming out. Uh, I have a few in the works of my own personal music. Mm -hmm. And then I have tons of recordings of other bands that have played in my house. Okay. They aren't the best. Okay. Um, but there are, when I'm working just with myself, it's easy to refine one instrument yeah. at a time. Yeah. Um, and so this year, there will definitely be 
some recordings coming out. Okay. When you get that done, bring it to the station. We'll stick it on a rotation and make you famous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Instantly famous yeah. on the radio. Yeah. We had uh, James Blacktop, uh, the boys and I, come into the studio a few weeks back. Uh, they recorded something for us. Uh, this is uh, James Blacktop, Wanna Not Want You Back, recorded live in studio. Want you back. James Blacktop, the boys and I, I want to not want you back. In the studio back, oh, in August sometime. Uh, and we managed to record that as a live on-air in-studio performance. Mike Sharp's in the studio, who will be doing a live on-air in-studio performance <laughs> in the near future, I hope. Yes, soon enough, soon enough. Yeah, uh, what are you planning in your near to distant future? Um, well, one thing is expanding the house um, that I run. The Mountain Music House there, um, getting more events going, um, just sort of really diving into being part of a part of the music community here. Um, it's sort of flourishing now. It seemed like when I first moved here, I didn't see it. I didn't know what to look for, I guess. Yeah. And sort of the more that I that I go out and search around and, and insert myself into that, um, the more sort of comes out of the woodworks. Yeah, there's a, an entire underground sort of community that's here that's becoming less underground. I hope so. Please. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I sort of want to sort of want to help help that grow as much as yeah. I can. Yeah. Um, there's a few things that I wanted to mention. The one uh, the one is my friend friend Todd Donald. Mm -hmm. um, he runs a podcast in Kitchener 
Um, and he's got a lot of really great stuff on his podcast. Um, since, yeah, since I was supposed to perform here today, I'll mention it. There, there, are, it, there are a couple of recordings on the podcast that I did um, with Todd Donald. We went to um, the Descendants Brewery oh, yeah, and we yeah. did the podcast there. Mm-hmm. Um, my friend Milana Boss and I both performed um, some music. So I did okay. an original. She did an original. And then we have some music that we've been working on together. And we did one of the songs that uh, that we recently wrote there. Okay. Um, so that's a project as well that's that I'm going to be pursuing um, is a duet with my friend Milana. Ah, uh, okay. There's something about a female voice with a male voice that just, well, they work together really well. It does. Um, and so we're going to be exploring that. Um, yeah, her name is Milana Boss. She's got music on Facebook as well. Okay. And then we have a band called Milana and the Bossman. Ah. Um, in which I play the saxophone mostly. Um, she sings, okay. there's bass, guitar, and then drums, and uh, it's a five piece. And the only so. extant recording available is on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. There might be something else online, but we haven't been um, really focused on that. Okay. We've, we've done some performances around town recently, and it's it's been good. So we're uh, we're going to see where that goes as well. Okay. Um, as you get stuff recorded and you want to have it transmitted over the airwaves, uh, please submit it to CKMS. <laughs> and send it to uh, office at radiowaterloo.ca, and uh, the music librarian will go through that and add it to our digital music library. The music librarian. Yes, uh, that's somebody I want to meet. Yeah, that would be it, me. Oh, true. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> it's still good. It's still good. Yeah, so really, all I'm doing is, is I'm getting a lot of music submitted through uh, this office at radiowaterloo.ca email account. People either send links to Dropbox accounts or uh, just send the MP3 file in the message itself. Um, and I'm grabbing mostly the Canadian content stuff. So if you're a, a Canadian musician, um, then submit your music and it will be played on the air here in our can connotation if you're from the kitchener waterloo cambridge area it goes into our special category of kw con yeah and then uh, you know it gets a bit of priority and uh, we like to feature local musicians and and you know, local talent in our community on our community radio station that's perfect and i guess i'll say the same thing about the mountain music house if if there's people out there that are listening who are performers in town mm-hmm. um or are going to be in town um go ahead and message the mountain music house's facebook page mm-hmm. um i monitor that pretty often and if we can work something out and you want to perform at my house uh we can do that um, all your contact information on the show notes for this episode sweet yeah awesome um so there's another uh another thing that i wanted to mention um sadly the cosmic maple is done um i met this really cool mm-hmm. person uh alina is her name um, she runs a podcast called called Pollinate, mm-hmm. um, and Keen and Inveda were on there yesterday. Oh. So that's going to be released um, shortly, I'm sure. Okay. Um, and as far as I know, I didn't have a chance to talk to her in depth about it, but her podcast has a lot to do with um, what this has a lot to do with, you know, like community engagement mm-hmm. and, invo- and involvement, yes. things, uh, things related around the climate um, and sort of our stance on the global global right. economy and things right. like that. So um, I'm not sure it's getting the focus on the radio called. station that it needs. So if there's material available and they'd like to be on the community connections radio show, you know, invite them over. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I've, I'll, I'll, I'll get in touch with her as well. See if she wants to come out and I'm sure you guys have a lot to talk about as well. Yeah. Um, so that, that is going to be a thing. There's, it, I've been thinking about like the, the importance of community for people and a society as a whole and yeah. it's so weird now like we're we've been so isolated, isolated for so long is the yeah. Word, so yeah. i think ever since what maybe the 1950s or so you know when the automobile became the thing everybody's enclosed in their automobile they live in the suburbs in their little uh, ticky tacky boxes yeah and uh it feels and safer that way I nobody guess. talks to their neighbors <laughs> nobody gets out and and participates in in social life anymore and i think that's coming back yeah i think it i think yeah. it is too i think people will there's people want that um yeah. maybe we've forgotten how to do that in a way um and so we invent something new that yes. satisfies the same need exactly yeah. that's sort of what i want to be doing this this yeah. upcoming year um 
I think it's going to be a big year yeah. for for growth uh, for in in quite a few Mount ways. And for Mike Sharp, yeah, for the music scene in the music Waterloo scene region? in Kitchener in in general. I'm hoping okay. to like. Um, there's a there's another uh, really cool thing called Create Waterloo, um, hashtag Create Waterloo, okay. and they run events, sort of pop up events up in water up in Waterloo, and sometimes in Kitchener as well. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of really cool cultural stuff that go that goes on. They have like Indigenous Appreciation Days. Yeah. Um, they have pop up concerts, uh, pop up art shows, uh, just really really cool. Okay. Um, I'm not sure who runs it, uh, you know, like, but, <laughs> you, but it's you called shall hit the Googles and see if you can figure something out. about. Yeah. That. Yeah. I wish I did some research before, yeah. I guess on that, yeah. but, um, those, those sort of things are, are powerful for, for having a, a stable community, like one where, one where people, where you can go out and then you see people that, you know, instead yeah. of like yeah, having your head down or like, yeah. you know, like not, it's engaging always, with people it's always nice to you know be in familiar surroundings and so the more you get out the more familiar those surroundings become the more familiar you become to the community and mm -hmm. you know the better everything works together you, you were going to mention one specific set of concerts as well trees oh yeah tunes for trees tunes for yeah trees. tunes for trees um is another cool thing that uh hopefully i'm going to be hosting at my house um keenan and i have been talking about it um and there's sort of a we've got some goals with with how many of these concerts we want to put on mm -hmm. um and yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna be hosting some of those at my house maybe maybe a couple if i can okay um so yeah just keep an eye out for for those things the so with all this stuff happening is waterloo too crowded for yet more music venues <laughs> i wonder yeah, yeah. um I wonder that there. I was having a discussion with with a friend of mine at Patent Social, mm -hmm. and he has an app that he's putting together. That's um, it sort of lays out who's playing where in town. Well, that's good. Um, yeah, it's a really cool, really cool app. Um, and I was looking at that. I was looking at the information on there, and it, there's like 400 bands or something that. Yeah, that's that are playing around here at any given time, and so on on any given night, you have the choice of four hundred different things to listen to. That's what I got out of that, wow. which seemed like a lot. That seems like more than I I thought. I yeah, that, uh, um, measuring stuff in the tens, you know, twenty, thirty, forty, but yeah, wow, um, maybe not like every night there's that many, right. but I think that's like the the amount of of bands and performers that are that okay. are playing on a regular basis okay. something like that so over um, the course of a month all 400 will hit the stage at some point during that month right okay. right something like that and okay. uh Just with with places like the boathouse closing up i was afraid that maybe there wasn't enough music to go around you know that uh, uh and then the other side of that of course is that if you've got everybody squeezing into a single venue yeah not everybody can be accommodated at the same time and, yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. It seems like there's a there's a different kind of culture in in Waterloo too. I think just the the types of universities that are here, the types of students that that go to those universities, yeah. maybe people don't go out yeah. to those kinds of places yeah. as much Good anymore. Yeah. Okay, Mike, it's been wonderful talking <laughs> to you. You have to come back. Bring a guitar. Oh, bring yeah. a didgeridoo. You know, bring a saxophone. <laughs> yeah, uh, no problem. Bring the entire band that's that's occupying uh, Mount and music and uh, <laughs> the entire horn section in here. Yeah. Seven trumpet players. <laughs> <laughs> Have you on the show notes? We'll uh, get all your contact information out there. Um, and then please do come back. Mark, thank yeah, you so much. That's, uh, community, CKMS Community Connections. My name is Bob Jonkman. We've been talking to Mike Sharp about the music scene in Waterloo Region. Uh, CKMS Community Connections is produced by well, CKMS Community uh, Radio, uh, Radio Waterloo, sponsored by Radio Waterloo. Executive producer is Jennifer Strong. Contributing producers are Jordan Dorrance, Jeff Steger, and Dylan Bravener. Um, and we'll be back on Mondays at 11 o'clock and also on Fridays at 2 p.m. 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. is the second hour for CKMS Community Connections. Happy Monday, everybody. See you next week. No.
I'm not a fighter. I don't like wet willies. But there's a plant that's good for all you silly billies. I'm not talking about Daisy. He's not talking about Daisy. I'm not singing about Twig. He's not singing about Twig. For to get to the root. For to get to the root. You have got to dig for burdock. Talking about burdock. Burdock I saw. Stick to a fox, then it scratched you off, and you fell to the ground, came unlocked. Guess what I found? Where you dropped, tiny and round, all your seeds had been set free. scientist was walking his dog Rose. Rose got covered in birds, so he looked up close. Little hooks on the bird, they even stuck too close. He took some samples home, took some samples home. and invented Velcro. From Burdock, talking about Burdock. Burdock the wise never says goodbye. It hitches a ride on a cotton clothes. When outside, smelling a rose, feeling alive, as if it chose where to be. Accidentally free, 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 accidentally free. Accidentally free Accidentally free Accidentally free Accidentally